at the end of the day, it's like very, you know, self-gratifying to come from where I came from and be able to achieve certain things today. I'm a big believer in fate. Stuff happens for a reason. If you really want something bad enough, I mean, you're gonna go out there and work hard, you're gonna push yourself, and you're gonna make it happen no matter what. I grew up in the uh, South, South Carolina, Charleston, born and raised right there at Roper Hospital. Yeah. Eat your bunnies. Yeah. Eat your bunnies. He had a very tough upbringing. His mom and dad, his dad lived when he was really young. Dad was a professional boxer. I do remember as a kid, you know, like early ages, going to watch him fight. You know, he'd be in the back of a limo, which is pretty memorable as a kid. And then, you know, unfortunately around the 80s and, um, you know, having that type of, a little bit of lifestyle, a little bit of money, got into drugs. They split up and I went to go live with my mom. Grew up in a trailer. My mom was having a hard time balancing, taking care of me. You know, my mom just wanted something better for both of us. There's Robert when he first came to live with me. That's a cute picture. Yeah, and then when he came that summer, he went to camp. I went back to live with my uncle and he was just, you know, the biggest influence in my life military background. He's one of the only, one of my grandma's kids to graduate um, college and get a degree. You know, had his head screwed on. It was at the end of his sixth grade year. I just got out of the army and, and was teaching school. My mom called and asked me. Originally it was kind of going to be a stopgap type of deal. You know, I wanted to, to help him and it didn't play out like that. Robert was with Toby for a year and a half before I came into the picture. And from what I understand, when Robert first came to live with him, he um, basically did not have any direction. Toby was definitely hard on him. I think he had to be. My uncle helped me out. He's my dad. You know, he's, you know, put forth all the effort. I think he was a great role model for him. He kind of got put on the straight and narrow and started studying. That was a challenge, getting him to buy into the academics. I didn't understand at the time why I had to study so much and why it was important, but you know, he kind of told me, hey, you know, this could pay for your education, pay for college. He needed some structure when he was young and he gave it to him. That's when I started getting introduced to sports a little bit, started playing basketball at the church league. He went out for cross country, started running with him. But me and Sheila used to worry about Robert's running sometimes felt like he was logging too many miles. Running was probably therapeutic for him and helped relax Robert, was a de-stressor. I think he enjoyed being away. I think he enjoyed working out. I think he enjoyed winning races, to be honest with you. Robert and Toby had a good relationship. He just wanted to make Toby proud. Kind of followed in his footsteps. They went to the same military college and into the Army. I was in college when 9-11 happened. I you know, was in the locker room in the cross country team and that hit home. You have that feeling inside, like, you know, I wanna go get those people who you know, disrupted our freedom. You know, being in the military, the first time someone that you were eating, like dinner with the night before isn't there the next day. Like, like that's the first time it hit me. I was like, okay, that's somebody I know that died. Most of my career, I've been Special Forces. Despite us both being Special Forces officers, uh, Rob and I first crossed paths for the best range of competition. Uh, I've talked with some of his commanding officers before, and they all hold him in extremely high regard. You know, fully committed to doing what it takes to succeed. His reputation is, is extremely high. 
Best range of competition is about a 70 hour competition. It's a mix of physical events and skill competition to see who's the best ranger team in the Army. I mean, you have the U.S. population, then you have 1% who are in the military, and then you have 1% of the 1% who are ranger qualified, and out of those 1%, you have the best people that compete in the best rangers. It almost became like a um, obsession for him to do that. I went into it with uh, high hopes of like, you know, maybe finishing in the top three or five. I didn't, you know, at the time think I could win. It was the best feeling. I could tell Rob was a, a competitor. There's a physical component, a mental co component, and kind of the heart, and he had all three. Once we had an obstacle course racing team, Rob was the first guy I sought out for the team. So he called me up and he's like, hey, you know, I, there's this new sport, it's called like obstacle course racing, Spartan race. I went online, did a little bit of research because I didn't want to be the guy who showed up on the team who had never done a race before. I saw that uh, Breckenridge was holding a race, you know, it's boom, it's right here in Colorado, a couple hours from my house, I'm gonna go, you know, try it out. get to an obstacle, I had no idea, you know, what to do. I was like, all right, monkey bars, just go across. Carry, you know, these big logs. I got done with the race, um, finished in third. I thought it was pretty good. You know, it was the first race I ever done in the elite category. Got a little prize money and I was like, you know, okay, I can do this. I got out to Tahoe, wanted to continue that, you know, top three finish. Finally put together the perfect race, dominated every obstacle, never really had anything that gave me any trouble and was able to pull out the win. That's when everybody was like, who is this, who's Robert Killian? No one comes into obstacle course racing in their first year and is world champion. I think Rob is unique and that's why I sought him out. So I was like, this could be a you know big potential to maybe pursue this professionally. Is it good? Yeah. Chris, what are you doing in school today? You don't know. All the roles that Robbie plays in his life, being in the military, um, being a professional athlete, I really do think that he's the best at being a father. Mm, that's a good one, Chris. Try it. Just try it one bite. Robbie's dad left him when he was two. I think he really felt that void. Since being a child, I think he's always thought in his head that he wants to be the best dad that he can be. They're the most important part of my life. They are my life. And I don't want my kids to ever have to, you know, go through what I went through as a child. So I implement that into every decision I make, you know, like, hey, how is this going to affect my family? How is this going to affect my kids? Robert's definitely come very far. You know, if, if Toby had not come into his life, he may not have graduated from high school. He may not have gone to college. He definitely not been where he is today. When Toby came into his life as a positive influence, he it just totally changed his direction, his future. My uncle took me in when he didn't have to. You know, he took care of me when he didn't have to. Didn't throw me to the side, you know, he was committed to, to helping me out. could have been living by himself and doing whatever he wanted, going out with his friends. But he decided to take me in, and I don't think there's any way that I could ever pay him back. That's kind of a big driving factor for why I do what I do, to help pay him back.
It doesn't really matter where you've come from. Your past does not define your future. I'm proud of Robert because he's supporting his family. And at the end of the day, that's kind of what a hero is.